What's up guys, it's Ivan. So in the previous videos we've set up some split testing and we've separated our ads based on, in this case, geographic area and based on keywords. Now within that, there are still some differences such as time of day or gender or age that could potentially be more apt to buy our product and look at our promotion than certain others, right? So now we need to kind of look into that and see what works best and what doesn't. So question is where? Well, there's two ways we could go about it. One is this dimensions tab, and the other one is reports. And I'll go over both of them and kind of show you how to read the information there. So let me go to dimensions. And here, as you can see, we're using our diabetes plan, and this is put on date. So when you go to dimensions, here's all the information that's available, and here's kind of this main, main thing that we're changing, right? This main option. Uh, and here's the information that we're reading. So First of all, we need to make sure that we have the conversions there, okay? So let's go to columns, let's go to modify columns. And when you go to conversions here, make sure you have conversions because we need to measure conversions. The number of clicks or impressions doesn't matter unless they equal to more conversions, okay? So make sure you have that because that's the main metric we're going by. You may also, if you don't have it, you may also want to put impressions and clicks. I believe that is here under performance, okay? But that's not as important as uh, conversions, but we do need clicks, obviously, to see what the conversion rate is. So after we do that, I have everything here set up. There's a variety of metrics we can go by. For example, in this case, we've used geographic, so user location. So if I go on user location, this will tell me where the most clicks and impressions happened based on geographic area, right? So region, country, town, city, specific location. So as you can see here, for example, you can sort it by clicks, you can sort it by impressions, by CTR. I like to sort it based on conversion rate. So usually the lowest conversion rates, I usually drop as long as it has some clicks and some impressions. Obviously if there's one click, and zero results, that's 0% conversion, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna get rid of that right away. Maybe I'll wait for maybe nine more clicks to make it 10 total and see what the percentage is there, okay? But what amount you wanna set it is totally up to you. But you wanna sort it by conversion rate, and this is, of course, the number of, the number of conversions you get divided by the number of clicks. So how many people that actually clicked your ad will buy it? And you can sort it just by clicking that, and it's going to put it top to bottom. Now, obviously, for this example, this web page we have is not meant to sell. It's for illustrative purposes, so it has zero all across the board, but that's basically the process you would go by. So based on the conversion rate, suppose this one has 15 impressions and zero clicks. Suppose this one had 15 clicks and zero conversion rate. What does that mean? That, in this case, Puerto Rico is not as fruitful. It's not as good of a region to target for your product. So you can either make it more, more likable to this area, more likable to Puerto Ricans, maybe make your ads in Spanish, or you can just remove this, this field entirely, which is what most people would do, and focus on areas that are more that are more productive. So for example, let's imagine that here in Canada, Manitoba, let's imagine that this one we got, you know, we got maybe let's say four clicks and we got three conversions. The conversion rate is three divided by four, 75%. So that's a really, really good conversion rate. So what does that mean? That when we're purging these countries and territories from our list of what we want to target, we should probably not remove Canada and Manitoba. In fact, we should probably have it as one of the top on our list and keep it there, right? So that's just an example of the type of the types of things you're looking at. You have user locations. The difference between user, user locations and geographic, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, as you recall in the video where we created our first campaign, there was a spot where we could actually say whether we want to target people in the geographic area or whether we want to target people that search for our geographic area. And we said we only want to target people that live in the geographic area. So if that's the case, then these two will be exactly the same. The results will be identical. There will be no differences. However, if you have different, um, different, if you selected a different option for that, such as also select users that search for that location, then your 
these two tabs will show different results. This geographic tab will also include people that searched for that area, okay? So that's the difference between these two. Again, user locations is actually where the user is physically from where they clicked. So 15 impressions happened, right? 15 people saw your ad in Puerto Rico, people that are located there. So that's that. So the other useful thing, I mean, you could use time. You also have search tour terms. Now this is really useful as well. This tells you exactly what search terms are there. So here is the match type that was used. So exact, exact, broad, broad, phrase, uh, broad. And like I said, broad is very dangerous. It can give you search phrases people put in that aren't as related to your topic. So our thing we're selling here is diabetes loophole, something to cure your diabetes. But if you look at it, it says most accurate glucometer 2017 in UK. Is that related to our product? I don't think so. To be honest, I don't know what glucometer means. If it is, then how likely do you think are people to buy our product? People that are searching for most accurate something, something. They're probably looking for some information. They probably don't want to buy your product. So if you have an ad recommending and selling a product for people that type in most accurate glucometer or glucometer, I have no idea how to say it, but they're not very likely to buy it. Then you also have this, Dr. Pearson cure for diabetes or diabetes type 2 side effects. These people aren't looking necessarily for the solution. They're not at the buy stage yet. So I don't know how your landing page is set up. Maybe you have a landing page that talks about what the side effects are and why you need a solution. And then here's the solution. If that's the case, perfect. But if you have a landing page that only sells the product, says, here's the diabetes loophole product, as we have in our example, right? We picked a random offer from ClickBank. If you have this case where it's giving you this product that's directly selling it to you, here's a product that's going to cure your diabetes. It probably won't sell well to someone who is typing in diabetes to side effects, right? These guys, they're not at the buy stage yet. They're still searching. They're not ready to buy yet. Same thing here, Dr. Pearson cure for diabetes. They're looking for Dr. Pearson. Can we persuade them to buy our product? Maybe, but compare that with someone who types in the name of our product is diabetes loophole. Compare that with someone who types in diabetes loophole cure for diabetes. They would be much more likely to buy our product than someone who types in Dr. Pearson. I don't know who Dr. Pearson is and if he's related, but I'm pretty sure that diabetes loophole has nothing to do with Dr. Pearson. So you get the point. So this could mean two things. One is remove broad, right? Which is what I recommended. Remove broad entirely uh, and put it at phrase so you have much more related topics, okay? Because this one at least has the word diabetes in there. This one doesn't even have the word diabetes. I don't even know what glucometer means. Maybe it has something to do with that. But the point is either you can remove broad in this case or you can sit in your computer all day and if you're generating more traffic, write a ton of negative keywords. So you would go into negative keywords and you would type in, for example, glucometer or Dr. Pierce. And what that's going to do is for people that type in something like this, the ad will not show and they will thus not click it. So this is important because this is a click. This cost me almost a buck, right? I mean, a buck's not much, but if you add all these up, your cost to revenue difference will be bigger and bigger and bigger, right? you'll be spending much more money than what you'll be bringing in. So we need to spend as little as possible, but get the most high quality traffic possible, okay? And this is something that will allow you to test it and see what's going on. So this is basically where you would go. Go to dimensions, look at the different features here. You have, for example, the time, the day of the week, uh, the year, the quarter, the month, the day. So for example, if we go to hour of day, it will tell us what hour of day we got the most clicks, the most impressions, and most importantly, the most conversions. That's what we're looking for. Now, in this case, I ran this ad for like one hour and then I paused it because I did not know it was approved. I did not think it would be approved, but it was. So make sure you look at the conversions and see, oh, hey, everyone's buying my ad at six o'clock every Friday. I'm getting 100% conversions and I'm getting zero everywhere else. You do that for a week, two weeks, three weeks, and you find that it's a repetitive pattern, what can you do? 
close out everything except that time, that Friday, six o'clock or whatever we said, right? That's the idea. That's how you tailor and refine your ads. And then after you do that, play around and keep going further, maybe create additional ad copies after you know which one has been the best, right? So the other place you can go to to see this is also reports. So if you go to reports, you can actually kind of create your own report. So just click here, pick whatever you want. Let's go with the first one, table, uh, but it doesn't really matter. Everyone's, every one of those is pretty much the same. And now you can drag and drop whatever piece of information you want. So we know we need clicks. Maybe you'd want impressions. We would need conversions, absolutely. Uh, and then we would need whatever piece of information we want, right? So maybe ads as well. And whatever kind of thing that we're measuring, we need to put that as well. So let's say, you know, let's say add. So you, you just drag and drop, by the way. It's very simple. Let's say add. Let's say clicks. Just add there. Let's say impressions. Let's say cost, we need to know how much we spent. You could put an average cost. And then here's where you can put in whatever else you want. So you can put a device. So this thing is useful. I think we need to put device in rows, not in the columns. Um, and this tells us whether the results came from mobile or desktop or tablet. And obviously you can make adjustments from there. So if you're finding that 100% of the people who click on your ad on desktop buy, and 0% of the people who click on your mobile view buy, then maybe two options you want to, well, first of all, you, you would probably do better by just pausing your mobile views completely. And then what you could do is kind of either pause it permanently, or you can pause it while you look at what's going on in your mobile view. Why isn't your mobile view working? And we did that in our view uh, in, in in our video on click funnels where we made our website more mobile responsive but you would want to go back and kind of see what's going on if that's the case why isn't your mobile working or the other way around your mobile is working perfectly your desktop is not hey what's going on with my desktop view why isn't it working you can do that um right and i wouldn't recommend just pausing it permanently because mobile view is, is very popular and it's growing. So I would strongly recommend instead you go back and you pause it for the time being until you fix it and you test out different variations and see what's going on, right? Again, you can look at search term. That's exactly the same thing we've done in dimensions. It's gonna give you the same piece of information, right? And if you wanna remove anything, you just drag and drop outside again, back in there. Um, now, as you can see here, these guys are not available. So that's pretty useful pieces of information, which is your gender, your age, your uh, parental status, not so much, mainly gender and age. Those are really important because if we know that, again, someone 25 to 34 years old are the, is the only age group that's buying our products, we'd want to focus on them. Now, unfortunately, we can't. This can only be done under display only. So in our case, our ads here, they're search. Um, they're, they're search based. So if someone types in, in, in this case, Google search or their partners, our ads will show up. Display means it's showing up on some web pages and websites. And that's the only way how you will find this piece of information. It's only on display ads and it can't be search and display. It has to be display only. So again, in the video where we've created our first campaign, you saw that we selected search network. It has to be display only in order to figure out the age and gender. Okay, so that you can narrow that down. So that's about it. This is basically this main place where you can figure out and make adjustments. So we've learned here, or you can learn here, the device that's best for you. Uh, you can learn here, well, in this one, I don't think we can see it here. Let's go back to our dimensions. You can learn the location. You can learn the search terms that are working best for you. And then we need to make changes off of that. You can learn the time, right? The time of the day or the day of the week or the month or whatever works best for you. And then make changes from there. So that's about it. That's how you kind of play around with the data and see what actually works for you and what doesn't. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. In the next video, I'm going to show you what you can actually do with this piece of information now. So how can we actually remove mobile view or desktop view or remove the location entirely? If, if you know, as we saw in this video, we pretended that Puerto Rico gave us an incredibly low conversion rate, how can we remove it from our radar? 
So I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you how to play around with all that and uh, change it up. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe if you have already subscribed. Thank you. I do appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video.